Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to my Boot HQ where I bring you the most breaking boot news as quickly as I possibly can. Here is another pair of boots sent to me by a friend. These are from my buddy Chris W, otherwise known as Chris of the W on Instagram. Check out his page. He's got a lot of great boots. He's collected Grant Stone, Truman, these Blackbird boots here that I'm about to talk about. He's also got some Caswell boots. He's a great dude, very enthusiastic about boots. So give his account a follow. He's got a, he's building up a great collection. And thank you, Chris, so much for sending me and entrusting me with these boots to temporarily take them in and review them for my channel and to delve into an all new territory I've never explored before. I have never reviewed a pair of boots from India before. So this is a first for me. So this is gonna be the Blackbird Shoemaker brand, hand welted shoes, handcrafted in India. Let's take a look. First impressions on the box, very high quality box, very nice textured crisscross pebbly texture on the outer box as well as on the sides. So that can't be cheap. Also, we've got a very attractive shoehorn here, Blackbird Shoemaker shoehorn. I've never seen a shoehorn in this shape before but they lose four points immediately because this is not authentic ivory. <laughs> yeah, so this is gonna be a plastic material, which is fine. I'll take plastic over ivory any day. We have to end the ivory trade. That is one evil trade. Plus four points to Blackbird for offering a plastic shoehorn. It's also got a rawhide leather loop installed. I personally, I, I use those to hang stuff up next to my nightstand. And so that's a good convenient little feature added there. So let's get into it. Two Blackbird Shoemaker cotton boot bags. Beautiful. And let's get a look at these babies. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Blackbird boot. This is a model that they call the Dixon model. And the leather in Horween Burgundy Hatch. What do you need? There's something wrong with the Oculus? Yes. It's not syncing up? I'll come help you in a minute. They Let's... get revenge. <laughs> this is revenge! You <laughs> <laughs> Hey! <laughs> no. Blackbird, they refer to their Capto boot as the Dixon model. This is going to be in Horween's Pioneer reindeer. It's also referred to as hatch grain in the marketplace. It's a combination tanned leather with a full vegetable retan. It's well nourished with a rich proprietary blend in oil emulsion. The Pioneer reindeer is commonly finished by incorporating our box board print hatch grain into the leather and aniline dyes are used to provide tonality between the tips and base of the print. Pioneer Reindeer has been used in applications where the leather can be finished to create an antiqued look in the final product. So it's embossed with Horween's box board print, commonly referred to as hatch grain. It's uniquely finished to provide a tipped effect. It's combination tanned. It comes in many colors, including cognac, dark burgundy, which these are. There's dark brown, there's black. I also see a gray color, Pioneer Tan. For reference, Chris of the W bought these boots. They cost him 24,700 rupees, which comes to just under 300 US dollars, which is a damn good deal if you ask me. Now, just for comparison's sake, these are $300 boots. Carmina is charging $795 for their Russian reindeer chukka boot which I believe is the same leather. Or wait, no, it's a similar leather. Theirs is a similar leather using replica Russian reindeer leather, which I'm fascinated by. I'm fascinated by the heritage behind Russian leather. Yeah, the grain is slightly different. On the Carminas, the uh, grain appears to almost have like a diamond pattern, whereas these have more of a, yeah, it's a diamond pattern, but it's more inconsistent, less bumpy, a little bit more smoothed out, probably due to some of the lasting. But before I go any further in this video, I do have to extend a thank you to uh, the Shoe Snob on YouTube, as well as Wisconsin Shoe Guy, who have also reviewed this brand, and I used as a base for my knowledge on this brand, because honestly, I didn't know a whole lot. In fact, when I first saw the brand, I thought, I thought 
they were called Blackbeard Shoemaker. And uh, I went on Instagram looking for Blackbeard Shoemakers and I couldn't find them anywhere. And here, no, it's Blackbird. But the reason for the confusion is because they just spell their name B-L-K-B-R-D. And so I didn't know how to fill in the vowels. So, <laughs> but it's thanks to those guys, uh, Shoe Snob and Wisconsin Shoe Guy, that uh, I know that Blackbird actually specializes in a shoe known as the Seamless Hole Cut. The Seamless Hole Cut. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive when I tell you the price. Now, if you have been watching my channel recently, you'll know that I did review a pair of hole cut Mariam Horsebutt Chelsea's, otherwise known as El Primero, who were also sent to me for review. Um, those were made by Fortis, and those were sent to me by my buddy Carlos. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. You can check that video out if you'd like. Those were the first hole cuts I ever reviewed. Well, those Chelsea's were hole cuts, technically, but they were not seamless hole cuts. A seamless hole cut is actually where it's one single piece of leather. There's no additional panels. There's no stitching along seams. There's no seams anywhere. It's just, it's hard to visualize uh, and to even conceptualize, but they just truly take one piece of leather and it must be an ideal piece of leather. You know, just dealing with hides myself now, I can tell you that there's portions of the leather that you can't use at all. So they must be, they must be honing in on the best pieces of the hide and then cutting that into a perfect shape and then lasting it just perfectly and it has to be able to stretch and contort in all these different ways and to do that perfectly if you go to a, a highly reputable uh, shoemaker that's been in the industry for a long time you will pay between two and three thousand dollars for a seamless hole cut shoe from probably a Gaziano Girling or an Edward Green or something like that um, this is a type of shoe I'm not very well versed in I've never seen them in real life but Blackbird is actually doing them for $300, which is basically unheard of. Now, Shoe Snob was saying that in order to get the price that low, they're actually, they're not compromising on the materials. What's happening is they're compromising on the labor. The, uh, that's where you're saving all your money is in the labor. Now, there are gonna be some minor imperfections in the way that the shoe is lasted, but to get a flawless shoe like that, you will pay seven to 10 times the amount. What he was saying was for 300 bucks, <laughs> you're getting uh, something that's an out of this world value. If you truly appreciate a seamless hole cut, which they're typically very sleek, usually built on a very, very sleek, dressy last. It's just wild to see that, you know, them rotate the whole shoe around and there's no, you don't see any stitches. It's just one whole piece of leather. It's really wild. It, like it, it blows my mind to think about it. The guys behind the brand are Sandeep and Pradeep. Chris has been talking to them on Instagram quite frequently lately. Sandeep actually lives in Boston and answers questions during the day. Pradeep lives in India and it answers the questions overnight. So they pretty much have 24 hour coverage. Pradeep also answers the in-depth construction questions. Chris told me that speaking to Sandeep recently, he found out that there's some cool information happening, some new developments. They're in the process of making a bunch of new last and design improvements which is very cool. These guys are working on their craft. They're working on their product. They're trying to get the quality even higher than what it already is. And telling you just at a glance, this Pioneer Reindeer Hatch Grain Leather is, it's got so much depth to it. It's very beautiful. Um, it's almost got like a plasticky feel to it. Almost like it's been heavily polished, heavily waxed up, especially on the surface. So these are gonna be fully lined. This is a very dressy leather. The leather itself has deep notes of burgundy and black throughout. Very high sheen, despite this being a hatch grain. Now this grain pattern is actually, it's not true to the character of the leather. They actually emboss this pattern into the le leather. They stamp it in there, which is really cool. It gives it a really nice textured pebbly feel. The toe area, because it's stretched pretty hard over the last this toe area is going to contain less grain density compared to the more unlasted unstretched portions panels of the shoe such as the quarters here and the back heel stay here you can see that the hatch grain is a lot more prominent here 
as compared to on the toe. That's to be expected. We've got a perforated cap toe. This looks to be a, like a pretty narrow almond dressy type of a last. It's built on the Vibram Eton sole. Andres at Bordeaux also uses these soles a lot. Beautiful. So it looks like this last is called the Quero B last. This is according to Blackbird's website. The Dixon is our take on classy. Combat, it's a combat boot with sophisticated English silhouette. The design features a cap toe vamp and seven eyelet lace up. So we've got a leather midsole. So these are gonna be hand welted, full leather lining, leather insole, natural cork filler for the utmost comfort, full grain leather midsole, stacked leather heel. So we've got a full grain leather midsole. We've got the Vibram Topi outsole. We've got three stacks of vegetable tanned leather in the heel, very well structured back heel counter, very well structured cap toe. Not sure if they're using leather stiffeners, but that is quite very well structured. I really like the contrasting black tongue. And then they also included some black rawhide laces. These rawhide laces don't feel as substantial as some of the ones that I've had sourced within the US, but the laces are never my top concern. It's also noteworthy that they also threw in some uh, flat wax cotton laces into the box as well. Blackbeard seems to do a lot of different styles. I see that they do chukkas with wedge soles. They're doing double monk straps. They're doing Chelsea's. They're doing standard derbies. They do a model called the Vittorio. Very dressy, very beautiful. Kind of looks like a an Edward Green or a Gaziano Girling to me. Ooh, they do a custom Falcon boot in Chestnut Museum calf. It's got a really nice marbled appearance and looks like a shin guard at the top. Their seamless hole cut they call the Constance in Chestnut Museum calf. And so yeah, Blackbeard actually has a lot of really good looking lasts. Again, these are gonna fall more in line with what, what I would consider more dressy lasts, but they've got what's called the Oceanco the FF4, the Royce and Royce, the Bentley, the Pagani, the Holden, the Harley, the Triumph. And it looks like most of their fittings are true to size. You can do custom orders. You can choose from all kinds of different leathers for the uppers, all kinds of outsoles, any kind of last that you want. So how did they come up with the name Blackbird Shoemaker? Blackbird Shoemaker is an associate of the retail brand for their existing manufacturing business by the name of Blackbird Footwear Co. To retain the correspondence with our parent company and simultaneously create a distinction, we concluded that the name would be Blackbird Shoemaker and it is pronounced the same way, Blackbird, not Blackbeard. The name Blackbird is inspired by a hypersonic spy plane, the SR-71, developed by NASA in the late 1950s and named the Blackbird. The SR-71 Blackbird was designed to be stealthy, but the curves made it very beautiful and highly recognizable, similar to Blackbird shoes, which are designed to be subtle yet highly sophisticated and noticeable. Blackbird shoes are completely handmade by some of the most skilled and passionate craftsmen in Agra. Shoes are not just a product, we tend to sell and earn a living, but making beautiful shoes is a passion of ours. They focus on comfort, durability, the highest quality materials, and they deliver their shoes direct to customer at the lowest profit margins. Uh, yeah, they bring a, a good point here on their site. They say, why haven't I heard of any other brand selling hand welted Goodyear welted shoes in India? Hand welted shoes require great skill and craftsmanship and an intensive process of shoemaking to craft a single pair of shoes. Hand welting is a traditional and legacy style of shoemaking. There are very few craftsmen in India with such extraordinary shoemaking skills. For such a taste for traditional and expensive price point for a well-crafted shoe, there are very few buyers. Ones with such exquisite and classy taste in high-end premium shoes, hence there may only be a few brands selling hand welted or true hand crafted shoes in general. Yeah, that's true. There's not that many makers that make this stuff, and there's also not that many buyers that are interested in spending the money and or investing the time in re doing the research and getting to know and understand these types of shoes and the different levels of refinement that, that can be attained in the process. And so for that reason, yeah, that's why it's rare and it's generally very expensive. But in this case with Blackbird, it's not expensive. You will pay the same amount that you'll pay for a pair of high, higher end mall brand shoes like at Nordstrom's 
you'll spend the same amount with Blackbird and you're getting <laughs> something that rivals Gaziano and Gerling, for sure. And or Edward Green, you know, some of the top names in the world. Will you maybe need to try out a couple of different sizes before you nail down your size and the proper last and all that? Maybe, but if you talk to them enough and uh, give enough information back and forth, they'll set you up with the right size, typically the first time around. This is basically going to be a bespoke shoemaker experience similar to many of the Indonesian brands that I've covered on my channel. You know, being that these are made in India, the price, the cost of labor is obviously going to be far more affordable and you're gonna be able to experiment around, try what you like. It's really a great process. I'm really happy that I got to uh, get a look at these boots in person. These are definitely phenomenal shoes for $300. It's crazy how good this is. And one thing just aesthetically that I really have to appreciate about these boots in particular is the edge staining that they did on the sole that contrasts just so warm and beautifully against the burgundy uppers. They've got sort of like a cognac edge finish around here, which is just tremendous. Beautiful pick there. I'd see most makers probably choosing an all black stained edge. I'm a sucker for antique soles, I always have been, and the tonality and the contrast of this antique sole against these uppers is just a home run. The speed hooks, they're using the same quality, uh, the, the same type of speed hooks that Alden uses. Pretty thin, you know, they're more refined, but th these type of speed hooks will bend down. You might need to uh, readjust those as if, if you bend them down. It's not a big deal. Like I said, even higher end shoemakers do that. Another thing that's really cool that Blackbird does is they do what's called the special type of sole. Yeah, the fiddle waist uh, sole. It's a very beautiful, refined looking sole. It's all leather, and yeah, the, the best way to describe that shape and that contour is fiddle waist. I'm sure there's a whole story behind that, but Blackbird also specializes in a fiddle waist sole. If I was to go the bespoke route, that's what I would do. I, I would go for a fiddle waist. Okay, so the fiddle waist, otherwise known as the violin waist, refers to the narrow beveled waist aesthetic of these special soled shoes. This is achieved by thickening the sole in its midpoint and gently tapering from the middle to the edges. This skillful shoemaking technique results in a beautiful beveled waist. This is an extremely time consuming process and the shaping has to be precise and must match perfectly on each shoe so that one does not differ from the other. This is not easy, but when well done, it is very much worth the effect that the detail provides for both the customer and the maker. It's a sign of pride in your craftsmanship and a sign of elegance in your shoe. That's according to Civardi. And I didn't know this, but a good cobbler can actually install a fiddle waist onto your shoes during a resole. Uh, and most prominently uh, on Instagram, the only cobbler that pops up in my feed that has done a fiddle waist resole is my buddy Pablo at Dimar Shoe Repair. He's located in Guelph, Ontario, Canada, and he accepts mail-in orders. So I will also leave a link to his website below. If you're interested in resoling any of your dressier shoes to a fiddle waist, he's one of the rare cobblers that actually has the ability of doing this. And on the shoe gazing site, the fiddle waist is a very dense topic. Definitely too much detail for me to include in this video. If you're interested, I will leave the link to the shoegazing article below. You can read all about the history of the fiddle waist sole. But, but to put it all into a JPEG image for you, yes, Blackbird also does the fiddle waist. So anyways, thanks so much again to my buddy Chris of the W for sending me these to review. You're the man, Chris. So a couple updates. I actually sent the video over to Pradeep and to Sandeep to review before I released it, and they had a, a couple corrections for me. So first, first and foremost, this shoehorn is actually made of real bull horn, hence the name. So that is really cool. It's interesting. Yeah, I could see it now. It's interesting. Bullhorn does have sort of a plasticky uh, consistency about it, but at the same time, if you think about it, it is sort of just like a cartilage type material, and so that's why it kind of has that hollowed out sound when I flick it. But yeah, it makes a lot of sense. That's beautiful. I don't think I've ever handled a real 
bullhorn like that before, but very reassuring that they're, you know, using all materials from the animal, not just the leather, not just the meat, but they're also using the horns to make other products out of. So that's super cool. I actually think, I think that's really awesome. Secondly, this boot's actually called the Luchador, and while filming it, I got a little confused during the editing because um, on the box it says Luchador, on the website all their cap toes are listed as Dixon boots, but this is part of their new rollout line, so we plan to launch the boot Luchador with the launch of our upgraded boot lineup. The one without a toe cap would be called a Rudiger. And so there are stiffeners in, in the heel and in the in the vamp. The stiffeners are 1.8 millimeters thick. They're non-woven celastic based material. Okay, so celastic. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's that's a really good material for the stiffeners in there. So anyways, I hope that clears this up and uh, I hope you'll check out Blackbird Boots. They are super nice guys, super great entrepreneurs. They're rolling out with a ton of new last updates, ton of new uh, boot models. So give them a look. They're trailblazing the industry for sure. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching guys. I'm Aerosurfer LV. Let's keep the love of boots alive. I will see y'all in my next video.